and green grass and beautiful purple bougainvillea. And, and as they run, the kids and the winos and the cholos and the grandmothers and the fathers and the uncles all turn into color. And the vaquero walks up, mounts his horse, the horse rears, he takes off his sombrero, freeze frame, do you believe in magic? Come be part of something wonderful, California Urban Cross. You know, so... Because what I'm using is traditional shaman, Native American, but not only, not only American, transformation concepts. And I'm staying simple and kind of almost archetype, archetypical. Um, so that in a way each person identifies with it and makes it their own. In the same way that if I have to have an actress who's supposedly dying in my arms you know, when I'm shooting a scene, and we just met 10 minutes ago, hi, how are you, nice to meet you, okay, like that. I've got to have something in my mind. Now what I have in my mind is meaningful and emotional, an emotional trigger for me. But, and, and, and this is a true one that I use, it may be um, an image of um, a dog uh, that I saw after her mate was killed by a car, the expression on her face just st st stuck with me, you know? Now, you may be looking at me holding her in my arms and supposedly uh, she's the love of my life and I've known her all my life, and you're thinking, God, I know just how he feels, that's how I felt when, you know, I had to leave home. Or you're thinking, oh, I know just how he feels, that's how, uh, when I lost my dog. Or you're thinking, when, when Grandpa died, that's how. What happens is the more I personalize it, the more it becomes universally personalized by each individual. So with these PSAs, by keeping them kind of uh, unspecific in, in most ways, although visually they're very specific, hopefully. Um, I'm hoping to be able to communicate a message. Um, and the message is that nature heals and that relationships are more important than anything in this life. Um, and that's a seed that's planted. Out of uh, a couple of million people who see it, um, if I affect 20, that's plenty. That's good. You know? Anyway, uh, next question. <laughs> But that's one of the things I'm doing. There are other ongoing things. That's a new thing that you guys don't know about. Um, there are other ongoing things that I'm doing with the Native American Commission stuff, traveling all over the state, meeting with all the different tribes, uh, tribal elders, shaman. Um, I'm still working on my Heritage Museum, uh, which as soon as the hotel property comes with a backer, I'm part of the, the EIR plan. I've already got all my permits and, and, and from Planning Commission and City Council. So I will make a museum. Um, for California history, specifically Southern California and coastal, but all the way from Alaska to Patagonia, essentially. And with the, the concept of, of showing all the similarities between all, all different peoples of all different times. Um, and it'll be in a sort of traditional Spanish style building, uh, California style, Spanish style. Um, but really, it won't be a museum like most old museums where you've got a $500,000 basket collection that's kept in display cases. It's going to be an e-ticket ride, with state of the art, uh, like more like a Disneyland educational experience than a, a you know public school system educational experience, and in a circle. So that you walk in, the first thing that we've got is these huge plexiglass columns, circular columns that are filled uh, with seawater and have fish and like. So that you, the first thing you do is you learn that it was underwater. So that these little kids, they re they realize that where they're standing used to be underwater and what's there and what used to be there and that maybe there even there's some submerged archaeological things because the, the sea um, <coughs> has, has moved um, 500 yards in from where it was in um, Pleistocene times uh, and um, there's a lot of evidence that there were coastal people moving up and down the coast uh, even when the glaciers were, were around because the glaciers never really came down to the coast there pretty close but not down and the Russian traders that came down from uh, Bering Strait the ancient oak grove people that were kind of our druids, uh, the Shumash and all the other Indians who were around there, the mission period um, where the Padres came up and built the missions and um, quote unquote civilized the Indians, <coughs> the Rancho period, which like I say, was the period of Zorro who really existed and was a period of so much kind of incredible um, bounty that they used to leave uh, Oyas uh, pots of, of gold of, uh, money at the door. And if you, as a guest, if you needed some money, just scoop some money on your way out. And basically, they lived the party at Fandango once every Saturday night. They'd have like $5,000 saddles. Anyway, so it's an extraordinary history up in, in that area, up to and including the, the uh, old lady Ringe, uh, as recently as 30 years ago, riding the property when Malibu was still a ranch, believe it or not, um, with a six gun on a hit, and riding, riding, the, riding the fence, riding around just to see what, you know. So that's going to happen at one point or another, but it's dependent, it's on a 
the single most beautiful spot in Malibu. You see all the way down the coast, ocean on this side, all the way up the coast, and in the other way you see the mountains with beautiful red rock formations and everything. But it's a 23 acre site that they're going to put a hotel on. And I've always been um, fighting development to a large degree, but this hotel is going to happen, no way. But it's not going to happen. So I figured as long as it's going to happen, and they had an obligation to do something for the city, why not include something that is, is useful to the kids? And theoretically, the kids will be able to walk in, turn left, see these columns of water, and go the entire circle of uh, the building, which is the entire circle of history of not only that area, but then expanding out into other areas and showing how well connected. Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Um, and I'm acting and I'm writing a lot these days. I'm writing a lot these days. And I'm very interested in the area of Spanish language programming. Um, I've always been fluent in Spanish. My mother was uh, born in Mexico City. Um, and basically, uh, the thing that's cool about Spanish language right now is that it's like Hollywood was in the 30s. You can have an idea, you can produce it, you can write it, produce it, direct it, and star it, um, which you cannot do in, in mainstream uh, English language uh, production right now. You have an idea, eight people steal it, first of all. Um, then and you, you take it to a production company, and then they give you a contract that you've got to sign saying that you can do this part, but you can't do this and this and this. And the producer's wife rewrites it, and his girlfriend edits it. And I mean, it's just like, you know, you might as well tear it up in little pieces and throw it up in the air. But in Spanish language, like in the PSAs, you can still really have a creative spark, a seed that then, then grows and, and, and blossoms, blooms, and, and bears fruit, and be part of that whole process, which is what I love. Now, next question. <laughs> uh, are you going to put any of that, like the kid on the computer, that short section that you have on the computer, because that way I was able to, to send a lot of my friends to that site that wouldn't ordinarily have experienced that? Well, first of all, let me take this opportunity. Um, for both Paulette and I, um, for some reason, and I would tend to suspect it's probably true for every single person in this room, what a year. No! <laughs> <laughs> what a year. I mean, I know. I have both. God, she has missed her this um, It's been such an extraordinary time of transition and opportunity and challenge um, that both Paulette and I, last night we were talking, we spoke, one of the times we've spoken on the phone recently, um, really have sort of recommitted to you guys. Because in a way, what we were trying to do, we in a, and Paulette primarily, but me just as, just as much in there, is trying to deliver such a high quality product that it ended up sort of being beyond what we could do. Um, and what we want to do is sort of kind of pull back a little bit and not sort of do, do a less quality, but rather something that's shorter and, 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 and maybe not quite as glossy, but get it out there until we have an opportunity to do something exactly how we want it. But the point is, instead of sort of saying, well, we'll wait till we have a little bit more money so we can do the printing job that we want. Or we In answer to your question, yeah, I'm going to put as much of this stuff, basically everything that I'm doing, and everything that I'm talking about here is going to go onto the websites. Um, there's uh, uh, a kind of a renewed commitment in both of us. Because it just, it was, uh, my horoscope said that I was going to need two of everything to hold all the wonderful blessings that God was going to shower on me. And it's been true, but it keeps you busy. The, the, thing, the thing that, that I'm saying is that there are people out there that, that I knew that may not experience the, the sources of things that you're doing. And the one that you did on the, on the state park, I was able to give them a website and they go and experience that, that they might not have seen it on TV. It gave me right. more exposure. Well, actually, one of the, uh, uh, this is probably what you're, you're saying, one of the ideas that we've had um, is not only to have the, the, the PSAs on TV, but to put them onto the web, um, to put them theatrically into theaters as little shorts before the film. Um, and because of the quality level that we'll be able to do because of the generosity of the people at Paramount and Warner Brothers and UFC, um, it, they'll be enjoyable. I mean, you know, you hear the storyline, that's a tenth of what it's going to be when it's, when it's there visually in front of you. So yeah, the answer to that is yes, is we're going to put everything on the, on the web that we can. Do you see them being distributed nationally then, though, other than the website? Um, probably not in, in the form of, a, of, a, of an ad for California State Parks. Um, but the thing is that because State Parks has been so slow getting any money to me, um, <laughs> and I'm getting them done basically on contributions, and what I'm able to beg, borrow, steal, and scrounge, 